Hello everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe from NVIDIA Shield Zone. We're going to help you get the most out of the C64 emulator, c64.emu. Now this is uh, compatible with the Shield Android TV, which is the interface of course you're seeing here. But in order to really make use of the application, you're going to need a keyboard. Or you'll need to do some of the tricks we're going to show you here. Obviously, if you can plug a keyboard in, that solves a lot of problems. But the Commodore 64, of course, was a computer, and as such, it needed a keyboard to perform many of its functions. But since the Commodore 64 was such a great gaming device, maybe we can work it out so that we can map a lot of the keyboard commands that we need to the controller without ever having to have a keyboard. Now, this is assuming that you've already set up the C64 emulator as uh, outlined in our help page on NVIDIAShieldZone.com. That requires a C64.EMU folder on your root of your SD card, and uh, you'll need some files to put in there, and those are all provided for you on the site. So next up, what we're going to do is um, we're going to go into our setup for our gamepad. We're going to auto-detect the device, and it says that we're on the NVIDIA Shield profile, which is absolutely perfect. So, next thing we need to do is find out uh, what sort of keys we might need. Now, I already know in advance some of the keys we're going to need, so let's set some of those up now. One thing you're going to need a lot of is the space bar. You'll need that to pass by almost everything. So, let's go to the space bar. We're going to map that to the uh, left uh, analog stick button, left thumb button. All right. The other thing you're going to need a lot is the run stop key, which is unique to the Commodore 64. We're going to make that the right thumb key. You're going to need things like yes or no, Y or N to answer questions like unlimited lives, unlimited health, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to make right, I'm sorry, we're going to make Y the uh, left bumper. We're going to make N, oops, I think we have to go down for that one. We're going to make N the right bumper. All right, and you're also going to need function keys. Almost everything on the Commodore 64 needs function keys. You need, what you really need is F1, which is currently set for the left thumb. So let's change that to, um, let's change that to back. Let's change F3 to start. Now you'll notice that start is also shared with toggling the keyboard. So if you need F3 a lot, you should probably unbind this one. F5, we're going to toggle, um, we're going to make that the X button. And F7, we're going to make the B button. And then the A button will be our standard fire. So with that series of button combinations, we should be able to get through most of the games that uh, require us to navigate through some sort of an intro to play the game. All right, so let's take a look here. Let's take a look at one of my favorite games, Forbidden Forest. We're going to start the game from scratch. And there's our favorite Commodore 64 loading screen. Now, if you use the uh, right uh, trigger finger, R2, it does have a fast forward feature that will get you through things a little bit faster. Right, so there's a fast forward button. And in this case, you need a space bar, which we've already mapped. All right, this is very common. They uh, put the documentation for the game into the loader. So it says space to read or run stop to start, right? So you can use your left thumb to go through, and then when you're done, use the right thumb to go ahead and hit run stop. Ah, here we go. Unlimited lives. No. Unlimited arrows. No, and I'm using the uh, R1 button here. Arrow is always loaded. No, no, I don't need to see the demon. All I don't want to. I don't want to cheat at all. And then, of course, once again, here's exactly what I told you you would see, which is function keys. So we're going to use the back button, which we have mapped to function key one. Oops. All right. Maybe back wasn't the best button to make function key one well let's do function key three then that'll be a little harder of a level but 
As you saw, it also toggled the on-screen keyboard. And here we go. We're ready to play Forbidden Forest. This is made by uh, Paul Norman, which, by the way, I've interviewed this guy. He's a uh, one-man shop. He did all the music, the graphics, everything himself. Um, did all the good Cosme games. So here in Forbidden Forest, you really need one button to load the arrow and another button to shoot. And yes, that's a big, giant, creepy spider coming after us. Load. There's a pattern, of course, to all of this. Unfortunately, on this harder mode, I have to kill more of these before we can go on. This is one of the very first games I ever saw that transitioned to night. That had really good gore. Yeah, once I get killed by something, you'll see the gore. So now you're uh, reloading your arrows. As you can see, the moon's starting to come down. It's starting to get darker outside. All right. Now the bumblebees. Use your trajectories. I end up getting dogged. There we go. I think on this level you have to kill like three of them. Oops. Dang it. Crap. There we go. Nope, just two. I know I haven't gotten dead yet, sorry. But as you can see, this works out very well. And you can see the stars are starting to come out. Nighttime happens. Don't worry, I'll get sp I'll get speared by the skeletons before um, I leave the game. In fact, you could speed up using the fast forward. Oh, frogs! How come I haven't seen the skeletons? But the skeletons were before the frogs. Now well, let's get stomped by a frog. Why not? Blah. The skeletons are the best because they stab you to death. Oh, crap. That's just a pool of goo. Alright, come on. Damn. I haven't played this in a while. Alright, well, let's back out of here. And we're going to... Oops, not that far out. Alright, so let's... um, Let's go back in here. Auto-detect. And let's go in and set our keyboard keys. This time, let's set F1 to something other than back. What keys do we have left? How about um, L2? I don't think L2 is mapped to anything. L or uh, R2 is mapped to fast forward. So, all right, that's cool. So that should take care of that. Let's try a different game and see how well our key assignments work. Uh, let's see. It's another good old-fashioned 64 game. Commando. Everybody loves Commando. Let's fast forward. Loading from disk is very, very slow. So I'm holding down the fast forward button. Imagine if it wasn't being fast forwarded. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is there any way you can get around that? Why should you have to wait for, quote, a disk to load? And that is something you can change. I'll take you on a little tour of that in just a minute. And yes, you can speed through the decrunching, right? This should look familiar. We fast forwarded to here. Going to need the space. And here's our, once again, we have documentation. You need to space yourself through or use run stop to get through. We will run stop. Ah, see? Now, again, we need an H or a T. We have neither. So right now, we would normally have to bring up our keyboard, but unfortunately, there is no mouse, and this is supposed to be a touch interface. So you're pretty much screwed at this point, other than going and assigning another key to high score or trainer. All right? So let's do that. Oops. All right. On screen input. This, this, oh, wait a minute. I didn't want to use the virtual pad. 
off. I don't know how that got there. Okay, auto detect. Click your device. Set keyboard keys. So instead of yes and no, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to use no a lot more than we're going to use yes. So let's assign high score H in this case. I think I know my QWERTY keyboard's better. We'll assign that to L1. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, wait a minute. Y is still assigned to L1. Yes. Yes, you can assign multiple letters. Right, so I could assign T to L2 to R1. So now either T or Y or N or H. Right, so you could you can cover almost every key you could possibly need. But let's go back. Recent games back to Commando. It automatically did a save state. We'll continue. Now we need high score or trainer. Well, I want a high score. Load or restore high score. Dang it, we still have another one that we don't we can't solve. So we need an L or an R. So let's do a uh, load. We'll say no this time. Gamepad setup, auto detect the device, set keyboard keys. What do we decide we needed an L, right? So let's assign L also to L1. Fortunately, you only really have to do this kind of once. And continue. Now we have an L. Perfect. Excellent. Now, Commando also uses the space bar to um, throw grenades. So that's perfect because we've already got something for the space bar. Right? Woo! So we're already kind of set. Weak. I don't remember it flickering quite so bad. Oh, weak. I think it's running, I think it's running too fast. So it's probably running at 60 hertz instead of 50 hertz. So how do we fix that? That's also easy enough to do. Unfortunately, it will reset the game. So these are some quick settings. Um, so what we really want is we want PAL or PAL and tri true, drive uh, true Drive emulation. For now, let's just go PAL so we can use faster drive modes. All right, so now we're going to reload the game again. Unfortunately, we ditched our save state, but it sucks to be us. Fast forward. Blah, 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 blah. Space bar. Run stop, high score or trainer. Hmm, it's not doing my H here. Hmm. Did I lose? Maybe you can only have a couple of keys assigned after all. Uh, let's see. Tech device, set keyboard keys. I need an H. Let's set to L1. Maybe it goes in order. So let's get rid of the... Uh, let's get rid of this. Quickly push left in the previous menu. There we go. And we'll set that to none. So hopefully the first L1 is the high score. Hmm. It's interesting, we seem to have bunkered it. Oops, recent games, commando, restart. Fast forward, I, I always forget. And let's see what we got here. High score or trainer? I'm getting neither. Hmm. I thought it would do both, but apparently you can really only get one. Uh, so I remembered it wrong. Not on screen input. Keypad, device to set up, this one. Set keyboard keys. 
so we need only one L1. And it needs to be high score. And then um, we are going to need L for load, so let's do R1 there. Now what would really be cool is if they let us, you can save profiles, but it's, it's beyond the scope of this demo. You could actually set up two or three different controller types, like a Nyko gamepad or whatever, and each one could have a different set of bindings. You can also go in and monkey with the profiles too. Uh, rename profile, create a new profile. So you could technically, okay, let's, let's do this. Rename profile. Of course, now you've got a type. Yeah, forget that. Let's go back to recent games. Commando, continue. High score, load. Now we're back. Now you notice the music's a lot slower, too. Don't quite have the blinking either. So that's better. There's been some great music on this game. But you get the idea, right? So we have a whole bunch of different games that are available, of course, if you go and grab them. So let's take a look at another one, just so you can kind of get the feel of what we're doing here. Um, my favorite, Dino Eggs. All right. Fast forward. Let it decrunch. All right. Skip. Oh, more trainers. Run stop to start. Now, we haven't, I haven't hit a keyboard at all the entire time. I've had no keyboard. Um, let's see. No. Oh. So I need my yes and no's back. Or at least my no. So let's get rid of L. Give us the N. All right, perfect. No. 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 Now we're talking. Such a great game. I hope the remake does well. It's up for green, uh, green light on Steam. I was hoping we'd have an opportunity to see a swap joystick scenario, but so far, so good. So in this game, you pick up eggs, you warp out with them. You get some points, then you warp back in. Okay, there's three. They will hatch if you leave them unattended. Rocks knock each other's uh, knock each other down, so you got to be careful with that. This first level is real easy; just kind of gets you in the mood. Now it's telling me to start a fire because the uh, the Dino Mom is coming. So if I don't start the fire, then she's going to come and stomp on me, which will be soon. Hopefully, I can stay out of her way. Nope. Missed me, missed me. Now, I could start the fire, but there's only one egg left. I think I could probably make it. Kill the spider. Boop. Warp out, and as soon as you think you're all done with all the eggs, you warp out with no eggs. And uh, you're done with the level. They show you if you missed any eggs, and off you go. So there you go. Now you can play Dino X. So now, because I've got this thing set up, so let's do this. Let me see just how hard this is going to be. You know what? We can't rename without a, without a keyboard. So for the sake of argument, you could go in, right? Plug, get a, wire up a keyboard, either plug one in or, or, or put something up there. And then um, you could actually go in and change these profiles, right? 
So you could go in here and choose from a bunch of different profiles, including the, your own profiles. Like we made custom too. That's ours. So I could rename that to something else like Dino Eggs. You could make another one for Beachhead. You could make another one for Raid Over Moscow, right? So you'll have to use a keyboard at least once to get things set up. Let's go through some of the other things real quick since we're sort of using this as a tutorial. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of options and whatnot on the screen that might be overwhelming, especially with a computer type scenario. This ROM disk and tape control, never going to mess with it. Unless you have to somehow change disks in the middle of the game, which I don't, there's very few Commodore 64 games that do. Quick settings. For American games, especially like Electronic Arts games, you're going to have to do this top one, which is NTSC and True Drive Image. I'm sorry, True Drive Emulation. Uh, this is NTSC with fast drive emulation, which is pretty much anything that's cracked will work fine. PAL is for European games with and without uh, drive emulation. The Commodore 64 floppy drive was very, very smart. It had its own CPU the whole bit. And a lot of games and a lot of loaders for the games exploited that. So you'll have to use the, that true uh, emulation from time to time. You could probably be safe most of the time using PAL. And of course, it tries to reload the last disk image you had in there. Swapping joystick ports, on or off. Essentially, are you in joystick port 1 or port 2? Port 1 or port 2? Right? There's, this is also automatically quick-loaded to um, the Y button on your keyboard or your controller. So if you're in the middle of the game and you can't move, try tapping Y to swap the joysticks. Reset is a hard reset of the Commodore 64. Right? So it's just like turning it on fresh. Load and save state should be pretty obvious. On-screen input, we're not doing any on-screen input. We did see our key mappings, right? So there's uh, a few things that we already saw, like detecting the device to set up, whether you're going to use the joystick X and Y axis as the D-pad, use the hat, etc., etc. These are all things that make sense. options. So in video, right, um, there's a few things that um, you may want to monkey with here. If you like the nice pixely effect, you'll want to turn off this overlay. Um, some people like that kind of smoothed edged sort of thing, and you can turn that on. You can uh, change your screen area and your aspect ratio and things like that, but just understand that uh, for the most part, the game, all the games are, well, for everything, the Commodore 64 is a 4 by 3 screen. Um, now, you may see some things about normal borders and border modes. Every now and then, like for one or two weird games, you're going to have to monkey with these borders. And it has something to do with, again, some exploit that they used to do something they weren't supposed to do. Um, for the most part, you leave these exactly the way they are. In audio, I mean, you could sit here and monkey with these, but let's be honest, you really don't have to. All right, there's some basic stuff in here. Um, again, most of this stuff is handled through the quick change or the uh, quick settings. UI, again, you, there are a few things you could do here. Um, hiding uh, navigation, etc., etc. Again, nothing unusual. Now, this Wiimotes thing, scanning for this stuff, don't even bother. It doesn't work. Not at least on... Sh nothing uh, past uh, Android 4.1 will work. You can set, do some screenshots. I've never actually done a benchmark, so I don't even know what that does. Suffice to say, that's pretty much all you'll really need to do. All right, so we can load um, something a little more iconic here, since I was sticking with some of the weirder stuff. All right, um, of course, Forbidden Forest. That's awesome. Gateway to Abshai. That'd be, now, see, that'd be a good one to make a full profile for. Because you need all four function keys for Gateway to Abshai, the space bar, and a fire button. So yeah, you could you could rig up all of your buttons and, and make yourself a working Gateway to Abshai. No problem. All right, so I've got a handful of things here. Jumpman's pretty iconic, right? Now Jumpman uses number keys to set the speed and the level of the game. So in this case, Jumpman would be probably very useful to have a custom profile for your controller. Otherwise, you'll be wasting a lot of time. Mule, right? We'll at least have to load that one up just to hear the intro. So Mule, of course, is an electronic arts game. 
this up loud enough? The iconic mule. Complete with ad at. <laughs> Amazing machine. 1983, this they were doing this stuff. Alright. So that's 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 pretty much it. I mean the real complicated parts are making sure that you have PAL or NTSC, you have true disk emulation. There's a handful of games uh, I list on the uh, c64.emu uh, um, help site that's on nvidiashieldzone.com. If you go there and type in C64, you'll in the search box, you'll find the C64 help page. And it will tell you about some of these weird games that require certain settings. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone in particular that just jumps right out. But there's a couple of them, especially like the electronic arts stuff. Right? Racing Destruction sets a good example of something you'd have to change discs in the middle of it. Uh, RPGs, you'd have to put a save disc in, that sort of thing. But that's, um, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, the emulator works great. You're going to have to have a keyboard probably at one time or another just to get things set up. Um, but once you do... You're all set, and you can start tapping the uh, 10,000 plus Commodore 64 games that are out there. Hope you enjoyed the uh, video. This is Shane R. Monroe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We'll see you guys next time.